G'day, Jason here from In Search of Australia. Omphalotus nidiformis. No, it's not a Harry Potter spell or a character in Roald Dahl's books. It's actually called the ghost mushroom. I'm out here today in the mid Blue Mountains looking to see if I can actually take a photo of this fungi that glows in the dark. A lot of the pine forests and national parks close to Sydney but also outside Sydney and down the south coast there's this particular mushroom or fungi that grows that glows in the dark. So when you're searching for these things it's best to do it in daylight. I'm down at a waterfall which has quite a lot of uh, subtropical trees around, lots of mulch on the ground and I'm trying to spot the mushrooms so that if I come back later tonight with my camera I know where to look. So what we're actually looking for is quite often old tree stumps that are decaying. The fungus grows in those sorts of areas and there's lots of moisture here. We had a lot of rain lately as you can hear the waterfalls running quite heavily but what I'm trying to find are old stumps or even sort of older trees where the fungus will start growing. As an example, it would be somewhere like that you might find them. Not that that's a good spot. But you can see that there's heavily mulched ground. It's semi rainforest so the moisture keeps retained here enough for us to have fungi grow. This is the wrong sort of fungi. What I'm looking for should be quite white. Okay I believe I found my first instance of it. This looks a little old and withered so this might have come out four or five days ago, maybe a bit longer. And I don't know how well it will glow because they do have a life expectancy. Here's some on this log too. But you never know, they might glow. More there. That would look pretty spectacular if it, grow if it glows. I'll keep looking. Came down closer to the creek, quite picturesque, and I noticed just up here where there obviously was an older tree at some point, some nice specimens. You can see that they're quite white and sort of look a bit like coral or clover, so very easy to spot when you find them. This to me looks like it's got much more potential because they're a little bit more pert and stable than the first lot I found. We may have another one here. Doesn't quite look as healthy as the other two I found earlier. But I'll mark this on my map and check it out later. Another thing I might check out <laughs> is apparently there's a glowworm nook somewhere around here. I don't know whether this is it, but I'd need to find somewhere else. A thing to note about these fungi is that they're actually toxic, so it's best not to touch them, best not to eat them. Uh, I think anything that glows in the dark is a definite sign that it's not edible. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spot some more, but I'll come back later tonight with a DSLR camera, which allows me to change its settings to capture the glowing aspects to them. So hopefully the ones I've found are actually still active and we'll see the results that I get. Yeah. 
been these strange markers on the trees too. I don't know whether I'm being led to some cult area for sacrifice or what. It's quite fascinating to realize that I've only really walked about 20 meters up some steps and it's hidden that whole area that I was in. The waterfall, the creek. You can see how easy it is to get lost here. The terrain changes very quickly. Now there's something that gives me the SH1Ts. I don't know why people can't just carry their rubbish out. It's literally 20 meters out of here. And put it in your bag, your pocket if it's small enough. And it's also an illustration of how we just tend to dump stuff wherever we like. Here happens to be where there was a mass crayfish kill because someone decided to just empty their weed killer into the drain and it obviously came down here with the stormwater and killed thousands of crayfish along this stream. All I need to do now is wait for that sun to go down. This is a nicer bit of the trail. Some of it gets quite tricky, especially in the dark. So, these drooping ones were a dud. On my way down, I was surprised to discover that I actually had to walk through the cave that had the glowworms. These photos of the glowworms are taken with my phone because using a DSLR would flash light on them to set the timer and things like that. So you can't shine direct light on them because it actually does kill them essentially or stop them being able to do what they've got to do. So these photos are sort of long exposures using the phone. The photos of the ghost mushrooms came out quite well. I'd say they could be better if I had a slightly different camera. Um, the f-stop was 2.8 and the shutter speed was 30 seconds and the film speed was about 3000 and that's what causes a bit of the noise so you get that sort of speckly effect on top of the photo as a result of that noise so they do glow it takes a little bit of fiddling about with your camera to get to see them uh, with your naked eyes you can definitely see them glow I wouldn't say it's a beacon in the bush in terms of light, but once you know where they are, you can set up your camera and take long exposures and get some nice shots, as you'll see. Hope you're interested in this one. A bit different from the normal videos that I've done, but I'm in search of all sorts of stuff. See you in the next video.